Shakes are one of the most important additions that you can make to your edits to make your videos feel less rigid. In this video, I will go over the best methods on creating a shake effect in DaVinci Resolve, including using anim curves, shake nodes, modifiers, and actual expressions to give you the best shake possible. Hi, my name is Peach. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring a portion of this video. Now, my favorite and the easiest way, in my opinion, to make shakes is through using anim curves. Anim curves is a modifier that allows you to control animation with a preset or custom motion graphs while having the length of the animation be flexible from the length of the adjustment clip. The reason that I am starting with this one is because it also helps you visualize and understand what makes a shake shake. Here, I'm in a 24 frame adjustment clip with my footage and I'm going to select the media in and hit shift space. I'm going to search for the transform node that doesn't have the XF suffix at the end and make sure you click it a couple of times to make sure you select the node correctly, then add it to our graph. You will know when it's the correct node when you see these slider controls for your X and Y positions in your inspector. From here, I'm going to choose the Y setting, right click it, go up to modify with, and then select anim curves. Now let's go up to the modifiers tab to change the settings. From here, I'm going to go to our source and choose duration. And this will make sure that our shake will be scaled by how many frames are in our adjustment clip. Next, we're going to change our curve to easing so we can access the preset graphs. On the out portion, we're going to change that to elastic. Now, if we open up the spline panel and hit this button, you'll see the graph that is the basis for our shake. If I play this back in our composition, we can see our shake. But as you can see, it doesn't end up in the right place that we want it to end. This is where we can change the scaling settings that control what values are actually being used by the graph. An easy way to understand them is that the offset value is usually the value that you'll see at the beginning of your clip, and the scale is either being added or subtracted from this offset value to give us our final value. So right now, we are starting from a value of 0, and we're adding 0.5 to get our value at the end. We always want our shake to end at a value of 0, so we can add an expression to our control to make sure that always happens. I'm going to double click the offsets value box and hit the equal sign to activate our expression controls. Then I'm going to click the plus sign and pick up the scale value to make it equal to the value of the control. Now I'll add a subtraction sign in front of it, and this will do the inverse value of whatever value I set up to the scale. So no matter how far I change the scale, the end value will always end at 0, and our beginning value will now be flexible to change for however far we want our shake to travel. Now to get even more specific with our graph, we can mess with the timing controls. And pay attention to the graph when I change these settings. The time scale control allows us to change the length of our shake to last either longer or shorter, changing how tight or long the frequency of the graph is. With the time offset setting, you can change where you want the value of the graph to start from. For example, we can fast forward to a part of the graph without one of the crests of the wave so we can have a shorter shake. One of my favorite use cases for changing the setting is by finding the point on the wave that is close to zero at the start of my clip so the shake can be used nicely when zooming in on a clip that we're already looking at. One last thing with anim curves is that we can actually keyframe when we want the shake to happen. If we change the source from duration to custom, we can now keyframe where we want the shake to happen. Just make sure that your starting keyframe is at zero, representing the start of the graph, and the last keyframe is at one, representing the end of the graph. Cool thing about this is by adjusting the custom graph, you can change the look of your anim curves graph, giving you some different looking alternatives. But let's go back to our original shake and go back to our tool controls where we can turn on reflective edges, do the same method to our rotate setting, and we can get something like this. Now, what you just learned about on how to edit the anim curves graph is basically the basis of how we're going to edit the rest of our shakes with our different variations of methods. And if you want to learn more about variations of creative methods, you should definitely check out Skillshare, the sponsor of this video. Now, I remember when I started creating on DaVinci, there was not many resources online in order to help guide me through that journey. Now, for you, you don't have to experience that same struggle because you have a resource like Skillshare. Skillshare is the biggest online learning community for curious creatives with thousands of classes led by industry professionals in the film, design, and productivity space. Explore your creativity this new year by developing new skills quickly with their dedicated learning paths. These paths are specific guides on different creative skills and programs that are helpful for people of all skill levels, whether you're a beginner, an intermediate, or an advanced user. And since I wanted to brush up on some of my 3D knowledge, one of the learning paths that I started was the Build 3D Models and Animations with Blender by Derek Elliott. I appreciate how each section was broken down so I could easily understand this confusing program, and I really enjoy the in-depth explanation and helpful tips I was getting compared to other resources I've tried in the past. You know which ones I'm talking about. They also have a DaVinci Resolve pathway if you're still new to all of this or you just need to brush up on some skills. If you're interested in trying this out, the first 500 people to use my link will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now back to the shakes. Now I'm going to show you how to make a shake with the shake node. Personally, I only use this node when I need a constant shake in the scene, but you can keyframe it to do some nice effects like a pre-shake or a shake that goes across two clips. I'm going to select my media in and hit shift space. I'm going to type in camera shake and then choose a second option without the suffix. I like using this node more than the other one because it has a lot more controls over the shake. If we play it back in our viewer, we can see that the effect is already going without us keyframing anything. And if we go check the spline graph to see the way our shake is moving, we don't have that graph. That's the downside of using this node. You won't actually see the position of the value of where our clip is with the shake. Nonetheless, we can still use it in a similar way to anim curves. First, I'm going to go down all the controls and turn them down to zero except our PTR speed, motion scale, and our speed scale. 
Now in the shake levels controls, we have our main settings like our pan, which is just our X amplitude, the tilt, which is our Y amplitude, and the PTR speed, which is our frequency. It's also worth noting that our motion scale is like our amplitude multiplier for these values, and our speed scale is how fast we travel through the imaginary sine wave that the rest of the values have set up. To get our basic Y shake, I'm gonna raise the tilt amplitude all the way, and then keyframe our motion scale at the beginning from one down to the end at zero. Lastly, in our spline, let's make our motion scale graph look like this. Now we have our Y shake. If you think the value is too low, you can turn the motion scale up to two, but then this is the maximum value you can have for this node. It's just not built to be more flexible. Last thing I'm gonna do is change the border type to reflect so we have these mirrored edges. Now, in order to do the pre-shake, I'm gonna put this adjustment clip over the cut in our transition here, then go back into our fusion page. Then where the scene switches, I'm gonna keyframe our motion scale at two, and at both ends of our comp, I'm gonna keyframe the motion scale at zero. Then I'm going to adjust my graph to look like this, and now we have a nice looking pre-shake that bleeds into our next clip. And that's the extent of how I use the camera shake node. Now to the other modifiers. There are three other modifiers that we can use to make a shake effect. We have the perturb modifier, the expression atom curve modifier, and the regular shake modifier. The one I'm gonna be focusing on is the shake modifier because it gives nice controls to create a different style of shake, popularly known as the twitch shake. I'm gonna select our media in and hit shift space. I'm going to add the transform without the XF at the end. Once it's added, then I'm going to right click the Y, go to modify with, and down to shake. Then I'm gonna to go to the modifiers tab where I can see the shake controls. The shake we're gonna do is gonna be rough, so I'm gonna turn the smoothness all the way down so the shake is super sensitive. For the minimum and maximum values, I'm going to keyframe at the beginning on the minimum at a value of negative one, and at the end, go to a value of zero. For the maximum value, I'm gonna go from one to zero. Then I'm going to open up the spline graph and make graphs that looks like this so they go super fast to the value of zero. And now I'll repeat the process for the X control. Then from here, I can reseed the value until I have a place where I want the shake to start from. Then lastly, go to the controls page and turn on mirrored edges and motion blur. The shake is good for immediate impacts or for showing off high energy in a scene. Lastly, I'm gonna show you how to make a shake with an actual expression using a sine wave. I'm gonna click the media in and add a transform node without the XF, but this time I'm gonna add some user controls to my node. I'm gonna right click the node, then go up to edit controls. Then this panel pops up and prompts me to make a new control. In this case, I'm gonna name it A1. And I'm gonna go down here to page selection and make sure we click the controls page so the setting shows up on the correct main page. And lastly, for our input control category, I'm going to select slider control to give us another slider control on our page. Then I'm gonna do the same process two more times, but this time I'm gonna name one of the controls F1 and the other one graph. So once we've done that, I have my controls right here and I'm going to put an expression on the Y control by putting an equal sign in the value box and then by hitting enter. Then I wanna connect our Y value to our graph control that we set up. Then on our graph control, we're gonna also make an expression as well, but this time we're gonna put in some expressions. The first thing that we're gonna put is sign open parentheses lowercase t i m e time and then close parentheses this gives us a nice sine wave that we're going to manipulate for our other controls next to the time variable i'm going to multiply this by our f1 control so i'm going to go next to the e and on time and i'm going to hit the star symbol to make a multiply command and i'm going to put f1 which is our control name next to that and lastly to finish up our expression i'm going to go outside of our parentheses and multiply this by our a1 control so what is happening let's look at the graph of our graph control currently it's really flat because we need to adjust our values in our f1 and our a1 controls i'm going to put this to a value of one for both of them. Now we can see our sine graph. The way that we're going to make it decay like our other shakes is by adjusting our A1 control. I'm going to keyframe our A1 control at a beginning value of 0.1. Then at the end of our composition, I'm going to keyframe it at zero. Then in our graph, I'm going to adjust it to look like this. And if I click the graph control to update the graph, you can see the decaying graph. If you play it back, you can see our Y shake just like this. So what is happening? With our controls, we are adjusting the values of our sine wave expression to make it have a decay. The A1 control, which represents our amplitude or how far the wave spans, is being keyframed down to zero, which gives us our decay effect of our wave. Our F1 control adjusts the actual frequency of the sine wave. An addition that we can make to our expression is by adding a value to our F1 control, and that offsets the position of the sine wave where our graph can start, just like the time offset control in the anacurves effect. And then that makes us have our shake. Now, technically, you can do this whole expression with only one extra control or with a modifier like a calculations effect, which splits the value of the controls to two editable controls, but much easier to visualize everything with all the effects on the same page. That's why I added all these user controls. But that is our shake. Now, would I ever go out of my way to make this shake? Most likely not. But I still want to show you guys that there is a true possible way to make an expression shake if you want to play around with that in the future. And that should be everything. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in other videos like every single way to mask inside a DaVinci Resolve, click this video right here. Otherwise, subscribe and have a good day.